Renfield is someone who's known, um, yeah, as being kind of Dracula's familiar. Um, uh, and in this story, we kind of pick up probably about um, around 100 years into their relationship. So Renfield's been working for him a long time. And to be honest with you, he's just exhausted um, with the prospect of continuing to do his, uh, his dirty work. Um, so he's worn down, he's beaten down, um, and kind of looking for an escape or some sort of spark to kind of return to his normal life and what he misses. You need someone for this role who's really going to invest time and, and commitment and, and really go for it. And that's something that Nick really does, but he does it in such a wonderful way where in scenes with him, it's just incredibly fun to watch where he's taking interpretation from as well, whether it's Nosferatu and, and kind of the, the, the physical interpretation of Dracula, particularly at the different stages of his healing and power, um, and the vocal work, and, um, you know, Anne Bancroft in the, in the Graduate is one of the things that he's looking at at times, and, and it, it really is wonderful to see Dracula being formidable and, and um, uh, horrendous, but also kind of quite manipulative, and that's what this story really goes back to: is this, you know, this toxic relationship between the two of them, and um, you know, they, they've been together for so long, and they 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 really do know how to push each other's buttons and, and work against each other. And um, yeah, Nick has been so committed and, and really turned up, ready to play, and, and um, it's just wonderful to watch all the all the nuances and and the things that he's bring to the character. Doing scenes with Ben is, again, brilliant. It's, it's, it's similar to working with Nora in many ways because they're both so fast and so sharp in terms of uh, improvisation and, and bringing more humor to the scenes. Um, but also Ben's found a way to, to do that with the character and make him very funny, but also being very believable and, and, um, and formidable as well. And, and it's kind of more, that character's way more heartfelt and you care for him a lot more than I ever imagined, to be honest with you, reading the script. So I've really loved seeing how he's translated it. The brilliant thing was that they actually gave me time to prep. So I came down a few months before we started shooting and, and um, Chris kind of really, you know, asked a lot of me and expected a lot, but in a way that meant that I could really, you know, jump in and, and try and learn all these kind of uh, fight sequences and kind of parkour -y sort of moves and stuff that um, hopefully in the film ends up being something that makes it special and, and um, brings the character to life in a different way. It's a horror action movie, and that's something that Chris McKay really wanted to lean into, that, that, that element of that we could be punching heads off and ripping arms off and all these kind of things that you don't see in a lot of movies, um, which is really, <laughs> I think it's really fun, which is an odd thing to say about doing that sort of stuff. Um, but again, uh, uh, Christian Tinsley's uh, um, special effects makeup branch have done an incredible job of built, making all that stuff practical, which, you know, a lot of the time in movies that would be a digital effect, but they've kind of built, like, limb, arms that can be ripped off and spurt blood, and the same with head. I've never punched a head off before, and I got to do that on this, so that was, um, you know, one thing off the bucket list. You have the most narcissistic boss imaginable, who is also a powerful, blood-sucking vampire, um, and how you manage to get out of that relationship um, and survive would be, I, I think, the pitch, but told in a comedic, heartfelt, absurd, strange way.